Well, now I understand why everyone was requesting this. I had first heard of Shogo a few years ago, but I didn't really look into it. I knew it was made by Monolith, which made the Fear game, which we've already covered on this channel. They've made a lot of games I like. So when this intro first started playing, I was... confused? Like, see here, the hallway's all lit, and there's the Gibbs, and... Well, you can tell this is a little different than the other games I've played. Let's just get into it. This intro is like two minutes long, by the way. Compared to the opening, the menu is a complete 180. I like the theme music. But my game didn't look like this at first. It looked like this. Shogo is a good example of one of my golden rules. Just because you could buy it on GOG doesn't mean it's going to work. So this is the retail version, and this is after I tinkered with it. So out of the box, it doesn't play well on modern systems, but it can. And there's a lot of people who don't know this. I thought it would be a good idea to list off how I made this happen. Otherwise, you're stuck playing in a windowed mode at about 11 FPS. Shogo doesn't support full screen, but it does support this size, which I'm going to call Planetarium. The first thing you need to do is download the widescreen patch, which some guy in a forum made. It's pretty easy to enable in the launcher, but we're not done yet. Because the resolution is right, but now the menu is laggy. And the game will be too. DG Voodoo Rapper is the savior here. It's a wrapper for older graphics APIs, and you can get it for free. The one drawback is almost every browser will scream at you that it's a virus, but you can just ignore that. Trust me. So once you've copied the right files in and got it all configured, you then choose the new display in the menu. It's not runs great, but the controls need work. It's like System Shock, where A&D turns you instead of strafing. But then I realized that clicking wouldn't shoot. It's a keyboard input and it won't let you rebind to a mouse button. Unless you load some lines into the game's auto-execute file. Now this wasn't picked up by recording, but sometimes the mouse would start flashing in the center of the screen. Another common problem. But instead of downloading some program to fix that, I just made a blank mouse cursor and used that. There's also an issue where the endgame soundtrack won't play. Running that in Windows 95 compatibility mode fixed it for me, but your results will vary. So yeah, now the game's running. I might end up buying this on Steam just so I could post a community guide there that has all the fixes in one place. If you couldn't tell, it was a little bit of a scavenger hunt to get this going. So now I can find out if all the trouble was worth it. Since I did just spend the past minute making it work, I might as well start with the graphics. This game is from 1998, and it's pretty apparent immediately, but there's something a little different about the characters' faces, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Certain weapons have nasty texture seams. There's some stuff that looks downright bad, even for the time. I was convinced this was a bug and this guy had a normal weapon that was accidentally scaled up about three times, but nope, this is actually working as intended. Shogo is the first game in the Lithtech engine. It would be developed for Monolith's later games like No One Lives Forever, Fear, and even Shadow of Mordor. Compared to its competition at the time like Quake 2 and Unreal, it's a pretty good looking game. I can't say it looks better everywhere because there's some issues around. Some of the outdoor environments are pretty bland, but then you compare that to the game's interior environments. The areas they added details to look great. Monolith was just starting to experiment with how much they loved high-tech facilities, parking garages, and offices. This was pretty cool stuff. And where have I seen this before? Oh. The thing that noticeably set Shogo apart from its peers were some of the effects. The gore looks really good because the blood is actually made of 3D objects. The result is that shooting people would cause blood to really drip down and go everywhere. They did make blood the year before, so it makes sense they keep going with this. The special effects are all over the top, and it's great. Moving on to the art style, it's what sets this game apart from the others of its time. Basically, it looks similar to other shooters until somebody actually starts shooting. The effects are going for a very specific style. In case the intro artwork and the title didn't give it away, this is... a mech game. That doesn't sound too crazy, but back then most mech games looked like this. So instead of making a mech sim, they made a mech-flavored FPS game. But they needed a way to make it stand out from other mech games, so they turned to the Devil's Paintings. If the intro wasn't a dead giveaway, this is an anime game. I was hoping to never have to use the phrase, this is an anime game, but here we are. I have some explaining to do. I don't hate anime. I hate this. I don't get it. I don't understand people enjoying this. Like, Jesus Christ. Thankfully, this game isn't that. This is more in the mecha category. It's more along the lines of Pat Labor and Robotech, not really Gundam. My knowledge on the genre is pretty limited. I have seen Pat Labor, and I have played two Robotech games, but that's it. I feel like this is an important thing to bring up. Everything about the game is anime-inspired, and it's terrifying. I do get what they're going for, but the models seem... off. 
I mentioned that it's not until people start shooting that you can see how stylish it is. This is where Shogo's art direction becomes a problem. Those barren areas I talked about really stick out when there's just an anime poster on the wall. The same goes for the environments. The more grounded approach to the levels makes things feel a bit out of place. It's not constant, but when it happens it really sticks out. It's really hard to put into words, but I'll try. They were using top-of-the-line graphics techniques to make the game look realistic, but they show you what the character is supposed to look like. Naturally, they're styled like anime characters. The models are also like this, but look at the background. Everything but the characters is trying to look as realistic as possible for the time. My brain just sees this and tells me it's clashing. It doesn't happen in the more fantastical areas, just the more mundane ones. The stylized effects are great, but less than two years later a game came out that showed how it could be done. It's about time I got to bring this up. When the game Jet Set Radio came out not too long after, it used a cell shading technique, so instead of just having some styled effects, everything had a style to it. And I know it's unfair to wish that a game had a style that was still in development, but what can I say? My eyes have been ruined by this. Robotech Battlecry ended up doing that. It looks fantastic. So I keep thinking about this weird alternate reality where Shogo was the first cell shaded game and took off, or at least was a cult hit. So as far as an art style goes, there's good stuff here, but a lot you've seen before. It's the story and the gameplay where things get really interesting. Honestly, this game cracks me up. Sorry, Commander, this area is off limits. Yeah, whatever. I have my orders, sir. Please be nice to me. This better work. Ah! Mantic. Well, I don't know about that. What's that supposed to mean? Do you have a pass? No pass, no ticket. Yeah, right here. I'm sorry, sir, but that pass isn't validated. You need to get it validated. Where? Any of the shops in Crescent Square can do it for you. Check at the register. It's incredible. It's one of those rare times the story and gameplay are so tied together I kind of have to do them at the same time. Let me start from the beginning. The game's protagonist is Sanjiro Makabe. Mak Makabe? Macabre, Shinji, Mackerel. The game starts with some background from Sanjiro's point of view. He's a member of the United Corporate Authority. They've been fighting over a planet called Cronus over a liquid called Kato, which helps power space flight. They've been fighting the rebels in the Cronus government and a terrorist group called the Fallen. So far, the radicals have wiped out his brother, his girlfriend, and his best friend. But then the game mentions that you're now dating your dead girlfriend's sister. Yeah, complicated is a good way to put it. There's a reason why I brought up my limited anime knowledge earlier. Right from the get-go, they have little Easter eggs around. M. Kusanagi. I know that one. A. Shinohara is next door. And hung over. I get the feeling this game is a little bit of an anime treasure hunt that I don't know I'm missing out on. I'm really confident that they took the sound effects right out of shows. Getting back on track, the only backstory you get is from that intro sequence and from this computer. I learned that the big bad guy was named Gabriel, but I didn't learn anything else because this guy kept talking over it. Sajora, this is Admiral Akaraja. Stop fooling around and report for duty. You told me to come here. We will tolerate no Commander, report immediately to Doc S. My patience is working. You learn from the Commander, who is also the father of your ex-girlfriend and current girlfriend because this is anime, that you need to go down to the planet to kill Gabriel. Do you have something you wish to share with me, Commander? Yes, sir. You are my personal hero, sir. Hmm. By the way, Commander, I'm pleased to know that you checked into regional diagnostics. It's about time you showed a little initiative. Stay out of the ladies' bathroom, Denton. Actually, this game came out before that one, so that's cool. For your first mission, you get to choose between one of four mechs. They all look awesome, and each one comes with a detailed briefing. Andre's ultimate MCA, the Andre 25 Predator is perfectly suited to combat missions. I'd highly recommend picking up one of the tankier mechs for your first run. Shogo has a very unusual combat system. Enemies sometimes drop health and armor, you can find goodies in crates, hold lots of weapons, all that good stuff. But when you shoot an enemy, every so often you'll get a critical hit. I'm pretty sure it's completely random. Besides doing a lot of damage, it also restores some of your health. The system allows you to last longer in some fights where you'd usually end up dead. But here's the catch. The enemies can also crit you. This is survivable in a heavy mech, but you spend at least half the game on foot. So if you're being shot, you'll see your health decrease and then bam, you're dead. Doesn't matter how much stuff you have on. But then you have to combine this with the game's AI. I don't know what else to call it other than an absent-minded savant. Because you can do this. But if you go around a corner too quickly, there's no mercy. But here's the worst part. These savants are blessed with precognition. I have proof too. Purple Flash, he crit me. The elevator wasn't quite up there when he shot me, but that's a little bit muddled. But I managed to get this. This is my Sasquatch recording. This proves everything is right, and I'm not crazy. Did you see that? Those are some quick reflexes. My theory is that they can fire from any angle on their hitbox, but I can't be sure. So imagine that, plus the crits. I'll fire the cannon myself, just as soon as I put you down. <laughs> Damn, 
I beat the game in hard, but I also tried an easy file to see how it was, and it was the same with the crits. But there's another weird aspect to the combat. The cars in this game are basically nuclear weapons. I dare you to step on one. Splash damage seems to hurt you more than a dead-on hit. I can't recall other games that do this. So even though you're in a mecha setting, with fast movement and a lot of weapons, you have to play the game very carefully. You get zapped around corners so easily, you have to check around every entryway. The game revels in its ability to drop in on you. If you don't make your own saves, it puts you back at the beginning of the level and you have to watch an unskippable cutscene again. You start playing it like a tactical shooter. For example, you get the drop in a robot, but you don't want to be too close when he dies or else the splash damage will get you. Just little things like that all the time. It can start to drive you crazy. The game also has tiny amounts of hidden power-ups you can use. You really need to make them last too, because your health carries on in between levels. Despite all of this, I kept playing. The weapons still feel great and the combat looks amazing too. I also got deep satisfaction from having a gunfight that I won, taking out multiple enemies without getting blasted immediately. So there was enough here to keep me going, but for others I could see them dropping this pretty quickly. I don't blame them. You can get in some terrible situations. I almost forgot, these things transform too. I was pretty excited. The difficulty means using it effectively is very hard. Once you do pull it off, you feel like a god. This mode doesn't have weapons, but it makes a pretty killer lawnmower. Things like this kept me going, along with the story. Along with the unusual world building. Classical Amish death metal? Megatron Bank? I'm getting eye flashbacks. Some of you Shogo fans might be worried I wouldn't talk about the cat quest. I have to talk about the cat quest. This isn't a side mission either, this is part of the main story. The rundown is you're blocked off by an electric fence, need the owner to turn it off. Tell you what, I'll turn off the electricity if you if you'll find my kitty. She ran off. Your kitty? She likes to hide in the building by the the, the pumping station. She'll only come to you if you have her toy, so you'll have to find it first. It's probably somewhere in the building. So Spider-Woman Jennifer Aniston won't turn it off unless we get her cat. The entire level is dedicated to finding this cat. Where are you now? Don't ask. So I carve a path of destruction and eventually find the toy. Magic it's Captain Claw from their side-scroller game. But then I hear this tidbit out of nowhere. Magic your own dinner. Sick bastards. For whatever reason, the enemy wants to eat the cat. Was Monolith trying to imply something about the enemies? So you lure the cat out, which leads to this exchange. Here, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come here, you stupid cat. Should I even ask? Just ran into some stragglers that were trying to eat a cat. Can you say that again slowly? Pervert. I'm having trouble picturing it. Maybe you could demonstrate. Maybe. You must have amnesia. I like how even in the recording you can see me stop because I can't really comprehend what I'm hearing. They use people literally trying to eat a cat to make that joke. That's incredible. You shouldn't run away from mommy. Mommy worries about her widow poop. Thanks, mister. Give me a sec. I'll turn off the electricity. Thanks a lot, lady. You want me to take the garbage out for you? You crazy. So she gives you a power-up and opens the gate for you. Now get this. That whole thing is optional. You can just kill her and the other guy in the house, run in the back, and then turn off the gate yourself. That entire new level is completely optional. Later you can decide whether or not to betray your army. This will decide the levels in the last quarter of the game and which enemies you fight. You could complete your original mission, which has Gabriel trying to whack you with a pool noodle, or you could take a completely different path. I won't get into the main story because I wasn't that invested in it. The story is like being a kid and flipping through TV channels and then you see, I don't know, Gundam or something on TV and the robots are fighting. Yeah, they're yelling about backstory and stuff, but you just want to see the robots fight. They only show the background and text, but they act like you should really be invested in it. Complete with the other dialogue option in the game about, well, your love life, but I won't get into that. It doesn't affect anything. I didn't care about the main story as much as I cared about seeing some of the weird background details. Shogo has main events that would be a joke or an easter egg in other games, but in this one it's the star of the show. Like you have a pretend rival the whole game that you could just kill immediately in almost every fight. I think you need to get over this obsession, it's not healthy. And then you have an actually hard boss battle that you need to cheese because they zap you instantly. Then you run into more weird shit. <laughs> What is this game? This isn't an out-of-the-way easter egg or anything. If you want to fight Mecha Hitler, you have to pass through the BG's pool party. Honestly, that sums up the game. I have nothing else to say. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. It was a pain to set up, but I still feel like I got my $6 worth. 
For everything bad this game has, it has something good, and vice versa. I'd be interested in seeing a remake or a sequel to it. This game didn't sell well either, because guess what came out three months after it did? They had to cancel two expansion packs, and I think it's safe to say the series is on hiatus. There's no checklist I could go down to recommend this. Shogo is Shogo, and there's nothing like it. This is the first time I made a video on something I hadn't played before, so thanks for the recommends. Even with its mechanic problems and fair share of bugs, at the very least it doesn't try to steal hundreds of dollars out of your wallet. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. How about that red claw, Carla? Nothing for you, Commander. You're on duty.